Ladies and gentlemen, the guest lecture is going to start in any minute. Please be seated. For the online participant, kindly check your chat box to fill out our deregistration link as a proof of your attendance. Good morning and we are delighted to welcome you to the Faculty of Pharmacy, Universitas Pajajaran, Indonesia. I'm Jessica. And I'm Nabila. We are honored to be the Master of Ceremonies for today's event. First of all, we would like to appreciate and thank our wonderful guests and speakers today. The Honorable Dean of Faculty of Pharmacy, Universitas Pajajaran, Professor Ajeng Diantini, Vice Dean of Faculty of Pharmacy, Universitas Pajajaran, Professor Alia Nurhasana, Head of Bachelor Program of Faculty of Pharmacy Universitas Pajajaran Professor Nasrul Wartoni, Head of International Unit Pharmacy Universitas Pajajaran Mr. Hollis Abdul Holik PhD, Associate Professor Faculty of Medicine of University of Tsukuba Japan Dr. Kyung Ho, Assistant Professor Faculty of Medicine of Tsukuba, University of Tsukuba Japan Dr. Yukihide Watanabe, and all the lecturers from Universitas Pajajaran and University of Sukuba, along with beloved participants today. Today, we are going to have a sharing session with one of the alumni from University of Sukuba, Rizki Amalia, followed with a guest lecture with Dr. Kyung Ho and Dr. Yuki Hide Watanabe. For the lecture session, we will discuss about how to write a research plan for scholarship application and information session on the Summer Research Program 2022 along with graduate program in biomedical sciences, including master and doctoral program in medical science as a part of max scholarship, human biology in PhD program and humanics in PhD program. But before we start, for all the participants, please fill out the in front of seat because uh, there's so much space in the front. Okay. Kindly join the front seat from, from now. Okay, now we are going to listen to the opening speech delivered by the Dean of Faculty of Pharmacy, Universitas Pajajaran. Please welcome Professor Ajeng Diantini. Diisi aja, masih kosong. Ya, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, Dr. Kyung Ho from Laboratory of Parasitology Medical Faculty University of Tsukuba and then Dr. Yuki Hide Watanabe from Laboratory of Experimental Pathology Medical Faculty University of Tsukuba and all the lecturer from Pajajaran Faculty of Pharmacy, Pajajaran University, and all the students from UNPAD, and also from other university. I heard that uh, there are many students from University of Mula Warman and University of Gajah Mada. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alamin. All praises to Allah. God Almighty, that we are blessed with good healthy in this uh, pandemic situation. It is my great pleasure to welcome you to this general lecture that will be held uh, by Dr. Uh, Kyung Ho and Dr. Yuki Hide Watanabe. Today, our guest lecture speak, guest speaker, Dr. Kyung Ho and Dr. Yuki Hide Watanabe, will share their knowledge and experience on how to write a research plan for scholarship application. I'm confident that by this participating in meeting, you will find new ideas, fresh energy, 
and moreover motivation to obtain the scholarship. And furthermore, you will also be introduced to their uh, graduate programs in biomedical sciences, including master's and doctoral programs in medical sciences, and with the max scholarship and human biology program, uh, the PhD program, and also humanic program, also in PhD program. I hope the program will shoot you and become one of your choice on study abroad. So finally, I wish you insightful lecture and have a good day. And I, I'm sure that this uh, uh, opportunity will be very beneficial for all of us. Thank you very much. And thank you for Dr. Kiong Ho and Dr. Yukehide Watanabe uh, come to Universitas Pajajaran in their uh, very tight schedule because tomorrow uh, Dr. Kiong Ho and Dr. Yukehide Watanabe will go to do Vietnam. And uh, today they will uh, back to Jakarta for the next flight. And uh, today also we'll go to ITB before to Jakarta. Thank you very much for your coming. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Ajahn Diantini, for the wonderful opening speech. We will start our agenda, which is to test which is the lecture session delivered by Dr. K and Dr. Yukihi from University of Tsukuba, Japan. The lecture session will be moderated by Dr. Hollis Abdul Hollis as the head of International Unit Pharmacy, Universitas Pajajaran. If there is any question during the lecture, please feel free to raise your hand or ask it after the presentation is done. Without further ado, please welcome Dr. Ho, Dr. Watanabe, and Dr. Hollis. Hey, thank you very much for your kind introduction. And uh, I'm glad to be here in Pajajaran. Uh, I came back here, uh, I was here about two and a half months ago, uh, and uh, two years, sorry, two years and a half month ago, and uh, presented here, I believe. So uh, it's, it feels like a home. <laughs> so uh, let me share my screen. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, I'll do it with this, I guess. Uh, and uh, today, uh, we'd like to cover some of the agenda. Hello? Okay. So we'll cover some of the agenda. Uh, first, uh, we'd like to introduce uh, where is Cuba and uh, why we study, uh, why you should study in Cuba uh, with the message from the graduates. Uh, we'll then talk about the medical science graduate program, including the MEXCO, and tips on writing research plans. The two other PhD programs, the human biology and humanics, as well as summer research programs. So I'd like to first uh, introduce my colleague, uh, Dr. Watanabe. Could you change? Yeah. Hi, everyone. Salama <laughs> Pagi. Okay, my name is Yukishide Watanabe. I'm an assistant professor. At that Scuba University. So today, yeah, not this one. So I'm going to talk about why study in Scuba. 
why I, I recommend you to study in school. So, oh, I'm sorry. Hmm? How can I change this? <laughs> Yeah, but how can I change to the next slide? It doesn't work. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry for waiting. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, please. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So could you go to next slide? Next, please. So this is the one of the uh, ranking, university ranking. So as you can see here, the Uber University is top 10 university in, in Japan. So our university is actually well, not good enough, like uh, Tokyo University, uh, Kyoto University, Osaka University, like a very famous university. But actually, we are, we have very strong point. So especially in science. So could you go next? So oh, before starting, okay, have you ever had Cuba City? Does anybody had before? But I think almost students yeah don't know about Cuba. So first let me introduce about the Cuba City. So Cuba is here. So this is Tokyo. So oh, Tsukuba and the Tokyo is close, only 50 kilometers far from Tokyo. So it takes only one hour from Tokyo. And uh, yeah, uh, Tsukuba city is known as the science city, which called called yeah, Tsukuba science city. Could you go next? So then, yeah, uh, Tsukuba City is built uh, by the government. So 60 years ago, the Japanese government uh, tried to separate the, the, the governmental function, and actually they separate science function into Tsukuba City. So that's why Tsukuba City have uh, so many uh, public research organizations. Actually, 60 public uh, research organizations is located in Tsukuba yeah, City. So as you can see here, so this is the map of Tsukuba. Blue part shows the uh, Tsukuba University, and the, the gray part shows the uh, uh, research organization. So as you can see here, so Tsukuba is a part of the set. The, uh, yeah, there is yeah, a lot of yeah, public yeah, research organization around the Tsukuba University. So for example, yeah, there is 
which, I'm sorry, this is a little bit, yeah, a small letter, but, uh, so there is Tsukuba uh, Space Center. So this is a Japanese version of NASA. So for example, one of the professor in medical science, uh, Professor Takahashi, he sent the, his ma mouse to the space, yeah, international space station to check the effect of no gravity on mouse. So such kind of the collaboration work we can do because we are in the, uh, Tsukuba, uh, science city. So such kind of the collaboration work, well, we can do easily within Tsukuba University. So, oh, but not only the yeah, basic, basic science. So there is a lot of another, the yeah, private research organization, including, yeah, uh, pharmaceutical organ, pharmaceutical company. So that's why we can do my uh, academic industry collaboration as well. And, yeah, surprisingly, the 10% population in Tsukuba City have PhD degree. That is surprising point. So that things only happen in Tsukuba, not in another city in the world. But actually, yeah, because of that, we are very good in science. Okay? And also, uh, well, there is the three Nobel laureates, yeah, uh, related to Tsukuba University. So, uh, Komonaga, he got the Nobel Prize in Physics, uh, 1965. So, Leo Ezaki in physics, uh, 1973. Also, Hideki Shirakawa, uh, he got Nobel Prize in chemistry in 2000. And also, oh, my, uh, good point in Tsukuba University is actually we also good at their sports. So, oh, we have, yeah, uh, 21 Olympic medals as well. So there's a lot of the famous university, world rank, yeah, high university, yeah, Cambridge, Harvard, Oxford. They have a lot of Nobel laureates, but uh, I think only one university, Tsukuba University, have both Nobel Prize and Olympic gold medal. So that is a uh, yeah, <laughs> strong point in Tsukuba universities. So, uh, next please. Uh, this is the number of the foreign students. So we have uh, 2,400, uh, around 2,400 foreign students. Uh, in total, yeah, uh, 1,600, uh, 16,000 yeah, students. So actually, uh, this ratio is relatively high in Japan. So we have a lot of you know, yeah, uh, foreign students. And uh, this is the... Uh, uh, breakdown. So, uh, China, Chinese is the, yeah, majority of the, uh, foreign students, but as uh, you can see here, so Indonesia is the third largest uh, population in Tsukuba University, and uh, currently 100 uh, Indonesian students, uh, is studying in Tsukuba Universities. So, also, uh, yeah, we provide the world class, yeah, uh, program. So, uh, Dr. Kyun Ho will talk about our program. And also, uh, we have excellent, yeah, foreigner student support. And, uh, if you can come to Cuba, you can see the beauty of the Cuba. Uh, please, next please. And today, yeah, I'm, I want to introduce my, uh, ex student, uh, Dr. Rizia Maria. So, uh, she is the alumni of our uh, university. So, she enrolled a uh, doctor program in medical science in 2013. And he, she obtained a yeah, uh, PhD degree uh, in medical science in 2017. And now she he came back to Indonesia and she became a, a faculty member in the uh, University of Pajadang. So now she is belong to the Department of Pharmacology and the Clinical Pharmacy, Laboratory of Cell uh, and the Molecular Biology, uh, Faculty of Pharmacy in the yeah, University of Indonesia, uh, the University of Pajajaran. 
So, so today she will talk about the life in Tsukuba. So please enjoy yeah, her, her presentation. Thank you very much. Oh, by the way, so it's yeah, very shy to show that, but this is actually my wedding photo. So actually, Isturi Saya or Indonesia. So Saya is a, uh, Peru, Bichara, uh, yeah, Bahasa Indonesia, Seriki, Seriki. <laughs> so the, yeah, uh, Ikita is here. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, please. And we go to the slide. I'm sorry. Okay, uh, uh, that's a uh, number two slide. Slide number, number two, mungkin bisa langsung di Okay, uh, teman-teman okay, semua yang ini sudah tahu saya, you already know me. Uh, okay, uh, my name is Rizky Amalia. You already know also, udah tahu panggilan saya Kiki. Saya dari Departemen Farmakologi dan Klinikal Farmasi uh, Universitas Pajajaran. Dan uh, saat ini saya adalah uh, afiliasi saya, tadi sudah dijelaskan juga oleh uh, Pak Tanabe Sensei, itu dari Departemen Farmakologi dan Klinikal Farmasi UNPAD. Uh, sekarang juga saya adalah uh, Kepala Laboratorium Biologi Sel dan Molekular Fakultas Farmasi UNPAD. Uh, laboratorium ini banyak kemudian melakukan pengujian-pengujian in vitro dengan menggunakan sel lain. Uh, untuk mata kuliah yang diampuh, uh, mulai dari basic farmakologi, molekular farmakologi, uh, konsep karsinogenesis, imunologi, dan onkologi, uh, dan background riset saya adalah in vitro stay, cell culture, dan molekular biologi. Dan uh, kalau nanti teman-teman semua tertarik untuk penelitian dengan cell culture, mungkin bisa nanti bergabung dengan laboratorium biologi sel dan molekular, dan nanti juga bisa memilih beberapa dosen pembimbing terkait dengan ini. Oke, okay, boleh dilanjutkan. Ya, nah, uh, tadi sudah dijelaskan oleh Watan Abis Sensei, saya alumni dari Skuba University, lulus pada tahun 2017. Masih baru, belum sampai lima tahun. Uh, saya sekolah dengan beasiswa dari Max. Kalau teman-teman tahu namanya Mambuso, itu dari scholarship pool dari pemerintah Jepang. Dan Scuba University itu kemudian uh, yang membuat uh, menerima uh, student dengan jalur Max ini dengan University Recommendation. Jadi Max itu ada beberapa, ada yang kemudian kita melamarnya ke, apa namanya, ke... Uh, Hmm, kedutaan besar Jepang di Indonesia, ada yang kemudian kita melamar ke universitasnya dan kemudian universitasnya yang akan mengajukan kita untuk mendapatkan beasiswa mampus. Nah, saya yang kedua. Nah, eh, itu tadi ya, kalau yang ini berarti prosedurnya adalah saya melamar ke universitas, universitas menerima saya, baru kemudian universitasnya mengajukan saya untuk mendapatkan beasiswa Max mampus. Itu tadi. Beasiswanya full, mulai dari biaya sekolah karena tadi juga sampai saya tidak tahu biaya sekolah saya berapa karena semuanya langsung di cover sama pemerintah Jepang jadi saya cuma kemudian menerima living cost tiap bulan 
uh, sampai lulus itu kalau teman-teman tahu yang beasiswa LPDP kan kebanyakan kita ya harus membayarkan ke universitasnya kalau ini untuk yang di Jepang kita sama sekali kemudian tidak tidak perlu memikirkan itu kita sudah terima beasiswa tiap bulan walaupun memang biasanya requirementnya lebih besar dan satu hal beasiswa ini tidak ada ikatan akademik eh, ikatan eh, bukan ikatan akademik ikatan dinas atau kayak seperti LPDP kita harus kembali ke Indonesia jadi if you want to stay in Japan after graduate then it's good for you uh, oke okay. bagaimana kemudian saya mendapatkan beasiswa ini yang pertama waktu itu saya ikut education fair di ITB saat itu saya bertemu dengan profesor saya dan saya diminta untuk apply beasiswanya dan kemudian uh, saya apply ke medical fakultinya uh, untuk program biomedical karena di medical fakulti juga ada beberapa rumpun ilmu lagi mulai dari clinical bio uh, uh, basic biology uh, uh, medical sciences itu nah baru kemudian ketika saya diterima saya direkomendasikan untuk menerima beasiswa membusuk baru kemudian saya uh, diajukan dan kemudian diterima itu jaraknya itu sekitar Uh, sekitar 10 bulan sampai kemudian saya berangkat dan pada Juni biasanya itu pengumuman dan beasiswanya kalau untuk medical science itu untuk 4 tahun kalau biasanya kan kita cuma 3 tahun kalau di sana benar-benar 4 tahun kalau tidak salah hanya untuk medical dan hukum dengan karena medical itu biasanya risetnya lebih lama publikasinya juga lebih panjang jadi diberi waktu lebih panjang 4 tahun itu dan uh, dapat scholarshipnya dan pada akhir of Uh, akhir September, karena saya harus enroll pada 1 Oktober, saya uh, berangkat ke Jepang. Next. Oke, okay. kenapa Scuba University? Tadi juga Watanabe Sensei sudah menjelaskan. Uh, universitas ini sudah cukup tua, walaupun saya berapa kali ngomong sama orang, uh, lulusan mana? Scuba University? Ha, itu di mana? Gitu. Temennya Scuba. <laughs> Apa? Gitu. <laughs> Tapi... Uh, Teman-teman, bahwa Scuba University itu masuk 10 besar di Scuba. Kalau saya membandingkannya, eh, biasanya levelnya saya sama kayak UNPAD di eh, Indonesia. itu. Jadi kita memang tidak selantang eh, Tokyo, Osaka, tapi kita ada di 10 besar. Dan tadi Watanabe Sensei sudah jelaskan bahwa di, di, di Jepang, eh, Scuba itu adalah Science City. Dan dia ada di kota yang memang banyak saintis, tadi 10% populasinya adalah S3, PhD gitu. Dan kita, saya sendiri sampai sekarang tidak bisa bahasa Jepang dengan benar. Jadi kalau cuma sekedar Ohio, ngitung, katakan akhir agama, dan kalau kanji, uh, orang ngomong panjang, saya nggak bisa. Jadi bahasa Jepang saya nothing gitu, dan saya bisa survive sampai lulus. Itu salah satu kelebihannya. Mungkin kalau di universitas lain, teman-teman perlu kemudian belajar bahasa Jepang sampai N berapa. Gitu. Kalau di sini, ya saya butuh bahasa Jepang karena saya bawa anak yang tadi ada di foto pernikahannya Watanabe Sensei yang masih kecil. Waktu datang ke tanah SD, justru di SD-nya saya butuh bahasa Jepang. Gitu. Karena saat gurunya ngomong, aduh saya harus pakai penterjemah. Seperti itu. Nah, kalau di luar itu, oke. Okay. Itu kelebihan salah satu dan itu jarang dimiliki Universitas Jepang yang masih masuk 10 besar. Gitu. Dan uh, World Wild uh, KS, World uh, Rankingnya juga uh, University, uh, University of Tsukuba uh, baik. Itu uh, terus juga dia salah satu universitas yang usianya di bawah 50 tahun tapi kemudian uh, sudah berkembang baik program-programnya. Gitu. Dan Tadi juga sudah dijelaskan, sudah ada tiga Nobel Prize meaning kalau dari Scuba University. Nah, kalau yang ditanya adalah kenapa saya memilih medical faculty, bukan fakultas lain. Uh, tadi mungkin yang di awal sudah lihat, saya uh, S1-nya sebenarnya biochemistry, itu harusnya kan saya mengambilnya kayak life environmental science dan lain sebagainya. Tapi saya memilih di sini karena <tuh> programnya adalah English program. Saya tidak punya waktu lagi untuk belajar bahasa itu jadi saya memilihnya English program dan itu ada di medical faculty dan riset topiknya uh, saat itu saya memang pengen memperdalam satu bidang cancer itu jadi sangat spesifik sekali uh, cancer terus nanti segala hal tentang cancer dan 
uh, riset eksperimen tentang cancer, tapi kemudian itu juga membuat saya memahami beberapa metodologi yang akhirnya juga bisa dipakai di bidang lain. Itu. Terus, tema riset itu juga harus teman-teman perhatikan ketika nanti akan memilih pembimbing gitu, atau program studi. Jangan memilih kemudian <tuh> program studi yang di Indonesia belum banyak e, bisa kita kembangkan lihat ke depan seperti itu e, bidang ini kemudian benar-benar dibutuhkan atau tidak dulu saya belajar real time PCR saya tidak tahu kita akan mengalami pandemi seperti itu dan tahu-tahu akhirnya saya harus masuk ke tim untuk kerjain real time PCR saat pandemi dan tiba-tiba sesuatu yang dulu dianggap sebagai sesuatu yang mahal e, diagnostik yang nggak nggak akan banyak dipakai di Indonesia tiba-tiba kita sehari bisa harus ngerjain sekian ribu sampel itu yang harus kita pahami sekarang. Next. I, Scuba City, katanya unik. Dia punya Mount Scuba, tapi ada gambar roket di sana, kalau teman-teman lihat. Karena di sana ada nasanya Scuba, tadi Jaksa, seperti itu. Uh, ada kuilnya juga, kotanya bersih, cantik, dan itu semua kota di Jepang rata-rata seperti itu, tapi Scuba sangat teratur. <tuh> Dan ini adalah di, jadi saat gugur, di, cukup di dalam kampus kita udah bisa ambil banyak foto, bisa selfie, bisa update Instagram, dan itu penting ya, nggak perlu jauh-jauh. Itu nah, di dekat kotanya juga ada kolam yang itu biasanya kalau saya lagi dapat data jelek, saya biasanya merenung di bos itu. Jadi data jelek itu biasa kalau kita ada di riset dan biasanya saya merenung di situ. Ambil minum catai, um, merasa kapan ya saya bisa lulus, kapan saya bisa lulus di situ. Walaupun akhirnya saya bisa lulus 4 tahun juga. Oke, okay. Kuba itu nggak jauh dari Tokyo, cuma 45 menit. Dan ada kereta yang namanya Scuba Express di sana. Hmm, itu ujungnya adalah Akihabara, apa sih teman-teman tahu? Akihabara, tempat belanja, beli handphone, beli peralatan elektronik, dan dekat dengan Asakusa juga itu jadi uh, dekat ke tempat wisata juga so, next oke okay. hmm. ini adalah hal-hal yang saya suka dari Jepang yang pertama pasti culture ya kita tahu unik sekali culturenya mereka berhasil memadukan teknologi dan budaya dan itu nggak banyak dimiliki negara-negara lain itu Terus student life-nya juga, itu di tengah kampus. Kalau lagi summer, kita biasanya makan siang di situ. Dan kampusnya gede sekali. Lebih besar dari, uh, apa namanya, UNPAD. Kalau UNPAD, kalau nggak salah, 3-4 kali lipat dari kampus kita di sini. Dan ada bus yang kemudian loop di sana. Uh, dan kita cuma tinggal bayar per bulan, per tahun, dan itu sangat murah sekali. Terus juga laboratoriumnya. <laughs> Laboratorium eksperimental patologi itu sangat lengkap kalau menurut saya, jadi kita bisa mencoba berbagai metode terbaru dan kemudian kita bisa bawa ilmunya pulang gitu. dan nah, saya mendapatkan tadi Max Scholarship, kalau di Scuba University kita ada dormitory dan itu sangat murah untuk kehidupan di Jepang jadi kos walaupun kita nggak jauh dari Tokyo, tapi kemudian kosnya sangat cukup untuk hidup dan menabung gitu, nah dan yang paling penting pasti buat musim, di Scuba sudah me menyediakan uh, untuk kehidupan muslim seperti itu. Di dalam kampus itu sudah ada beberapa kampus halal, uh, kantin halal, ada ada tempat sholat, praying space-nya, yang disediakan, dan kampus itu tidak jauh dari masjid Scuba. Masjidnya ada, biasanya kalau sholat Jumat nggak usah terlalu jauh, kalau yang cowok ada di dekat kampus. Gitu. Dan di dalam kampus sendiri ada beberapa ruang yang kemudian kita bisa pakai untuk sholat. Nah, di sana juga ada PPI, namanya PPI Ibaraki, dan sangat aktif seperti itu kegiatannya. Mungkin nanti bisa di follow di Instagram, ada PPI Ibaraki. Di sana mereka biasanya kalau lagi jalan-jalan kemana atau ikut program apa, voluntary apa, mereka akan sharing di sana dan kemudian kita bisa tahu, oh banyak kegiatan yang bisa dilakukan. Dan banyak hal seperti itu yang menyebabkan kemudian saya ngerasa Jepang aman buat saya sebagai muslim kerudung seperti itu buat anak saya e, bagaimana kemudian tetap agamanya terjaga terus e, next nah banyak hal 
yang jadi good memory di Cuba. Yang pasti di sana saya bersama keluarga saya, bahagia. Bertemu banyak teman-teman Indonesia, luar negeri. Saya juga dapat beberapa kesempatan untuk conference di Eropa, ikut conference dengan bidang sangat spesifik, dan kemudian tahu bahwa di luar sana mereka sudah mengerjakan apa. Dan uh, laboratoriumnya, uh, di sini saya bisa menggunakan bahasa Inggris. Seperti itu. Dan itu satu hal yang menurut saya sangat menyenangkan. Jadi saya tidak perlu kemudian uh, apa ya belajar lagi bahasa Jepang, walaupun ya secara umum kita masih butuh lah kayak menghitung segala macam. Soalnya kalau kita misalnya lagi order makanan, tetap aja kita harus bilang, saya mau yang ini. Minimal itu aja. Terus, karena saya hobinya foto-foto, Jepang itu jadi good memory, karena saya bisa dapat foto-foto yang bagus. Tadi kenapa uh, slide saya lama? <tuh> karena berat. Karena ini pakai kamera beneran, seperti itu, bukan kamera HP, saat mengambil. Jadi itu yang di gambar atas, itu Asakusa, yang bawah itu ada Sekuba Matsuri, ya. Oke, terus itu biasanya kita kumpul di rumah uh, orang Indonesia yang ada di Jepang, biasa makan-makan, seperti itu, itu jadi hal paling menyenangkan saat kita ada di luar. Dan itu yang bawah adalah saat anak saya ikut festival olahraga, jadi di sana sangat antusias untuk hal-hal seperti itu. Dan kereta di sana cantik-cantik, ada kereta-kereta dengan tema-tema khusus. Jadi nanti kalau mau jalan-jalan juga tinggal look kereta aja, kita udah bisa keliling Jepang. Oke, mungkin itu saja. Semoga ini jadi 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 apa ya pertimbangan buat teman-teman ketika kemudian memilih nanti mau lanjut studi di mana. Semoga bermanfaat. Gitu sensei. Hey, so uh, I'm going to share my screen. So you might not be able to see me, but I am here. Let's see. Okay, it's a little small, but we're going to live with this. Okay, so uh, we're going to talk now about the uh, graduate programs. So our University of Scuba consists of uh, 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 many faculty members uh, with uh, 300 or more faculty members with uh, 80 different laboratories. And uh, it's certainly difficult for me to uh, uh, tell you about everything. But nonetheless, what I can say is uh, you will probably find a research laboratory uh, that will fit you uh, on our campus. So uh, Thomas and I uh, have pre uh, well, uh, that can be summarized here and we'll be playing. Uh, again, no sound. Uh, let's see. Okay. I don't think I can get this sound. I'm going to be sharing with you about some of our graduate programs in medicine and medical sciences. I work here at the Faculty of Medicine, home to the University of Scuba Hospital, which is one of the best hospitals in Japan. We are known center of excellence for medicine, medical science research, and also education. We offer a broad range of research topics with over 300 faculty members working across 80 different labs in various fields. I'm sure whatever your research interest is, we have a laboratory for you. So let me introduce some of the programs we have on offer. Let's begin with the master's degree programs. We offer a master's program in medical sciences, a master's program in public health, master's program in nursing science, master's program in neuroscience, 
and the International Joint Degree Master's Program in Agrobiomedical Science in Food and Health, or GIP Triad for short, which is held in collaboration with our partner universities in Taiwan and France. Our master's programs are two years in duration and typically involve a combination of taught classes and your personal research project. Now, let's take a look at the doctoral programs on offer. We have a doctoral program in medical sciences, doctoral program in nursing science, doctoral program in human care science, doctoral program in public health, doctoral program in neuroscience, and our innovative PhD program in human biology, and the recently established PhD program in humanics. A doctorate will usually take you about four years to complete. They involve a few taught classes, but the real focus is on your research project, thesis and publication of your findings in peer-reviewed journals. I'm going to introduce some of our graduate programs in a bit more detail, but before I'd like to talk about some of the research that happens in our faculty. Actually, the University of Scuba is world-renowned as a top research university and was designated one of the Japanese RU11 institutes alongside other research-focused universities such as Tokyo and Kyoto. To give you an idea of the kind of topics you could choose to research here, let's take a look at a list of laboratories available for you at the University of Scuba Faculty of Medicine. Our flagship graduate program is the two-year master's degree, four-year doctoral program in medical sciences. You can select to study in one of our clinical or medical science laboratories. If you are really serious about research and you want to be a serious researcher, this really is a program for you. Next, I'd like to introduce our innovative PhD program in human biology. This is a five-year PhD that you would enter after completion of your bachelor's degree. In this program, we aim to bring together different disciplines of medical science, biological science, computational science, material science, to tackle the pressing questions facing human beings in the 21st century. If you're the kind of person that loves engineering, loves computer science, but you also want to be involved in the medical field, addressing some of the pressing medical questions, the PhD program in Humanics could be the course for you. Please check out our website for more information about this program. I think you're going to find it very exciting. At the University of Scuba, you can enjoy world-class education, a truly international environment. It's safe and clean, reasonable cost, and a high quality of life and great health care. This is a brilliant educational option. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. 
I hope you've learned something about the programs we have on offer. And also, I really hope to meet you here in SCUBA one day. If you have any questions, please do contact us. Please check out our website. Uh, we would love to hear from you. Thank you very much. Bye for now. Hey, uh, thank you, Thomas. Uh, it's his message because he couldn't come here today. Uh, I have a freezing issue. Here we go. So uh, first uh, program I'd like to talk is about the medical science. Uh, basically, it's the core of our faculty of medicine who offers the master's program and doctoral program. So this is a conventional program. Two years in master's, you can have an option to go for the four years in doctoral. If you already have an MD degree, um, that's a medical doctor degree, then you can apply directly to the doctoral program uh, in PhD. So uh, for, uh, for these programs, we now have uh, a mixed scholarship that with a university recommendation. I'm sure you have heard about what MEC scholarship is. But there are many, many different types of MEC scholarships. One that you, are, you should be interested in is a research student category that includes graduate degree students as well as non-degree students. Uh, there are also teacher training students, the undergraduate student, Japanese studies, and the other programs. So please do not first confuse uh, with this MEC scholarship type. You know, sometimes you talk about MEC scholarship uh, with the undergrad, uh, it's going to be completely different requirements. Basically, what MEC scholarship means is a Japanese government funded uh, scholarship. Okay, so there are two different types of scholarship you can apply as a graduate student, or if you wish to study as a graduate student. One is offered by the university recommendation. In this category, a university will select the applicants, and these candidate applicants can then be recommended to the Japanese government for you to obtain a scholarship. So the Japanese government do not screen you. Instead, once we accepted you, and once we think you qualify to receive a scholarship, uh, we send a recommendation and you automatically get, get the scholarship. Okay, so we do all the work for you. There's also a type of scholarship called MEX, Embassy Recommendation Scholarship. For this scholarship, applicant must submit uh, their application to the Japanese Embassy of Council. Here, I think it's in Jakarta, uh, in your home country, and uh, be selected uh, as a scholarship applicant. I'm not sure every uh, how many students they can accommodate, but you can sort of nominate yourself. Uh, you said you wanted to, uh, the school also has to nominate. Uh, it's a little bit of a complex system, uh, but this is on your own. You can actually uh, apply and obtain the embassy scholarship and then select the, the program you wish you want to enroll. Uh, then you can come to Japan. Okay. So today uh, I'm going to talk mainly about the university recommendation scholarship that we have. Okay, so uh, first, uh, the benefits of the scholarship. Uh, the tuition uh, and the enrollment fee uh, will be exempt if you receive this scholarship. That means you don't have to give back this money to the government or the university. Your monthly allowance is about 1,200 US dollars. Okay? Uh, I made it into dollars just to avoid confusion. 
uh, both for the master's and doctoral program. Doctoral program is a little bit higher, but uh, it's negligible. Okay, and for if you're enrolling in the master's program, you receive a scholarship up to 24 months. That is two years. And if you enroll in the doctoral program, you will receive for four years, 48 months. They also provide you the airfare to Japan uh, and the preferential assignment to the dormitory, although you do have to pay the dormitory fee from the stipend you receive. In order for us to obtain this university recommendation scholarship, we needed to set some kind of goal and apply to the Japanese government that we want a graduate students from foreign countries to study what. And in this case, uh, we uh, applied as a trans-border medical program for emergent infectious disease. So while the topic is on the infectious disease. And once you join as a med scholar, we ask you to take some of the course listed. You are welcome to apply to any of our faculty members, uh, although it doesn't relate it to the infectious disease. Okay, But you do have to take some courses. And we wish you can apply what you learn uh, and uh, talk about uh, how it can be applied to the infectious disease in your thesis. Okay. Qualification, that is the requirement for the eligibility. You must be a non-Japanese, so you're not going to be competing with the Japanese student, okay, uh, and have an outstanding academic re record. Uh, that is 2.3 of the 3.0 scale. So uh, technically, you need to have about 2.8 or above. Uh, nationality. Applicant must have a nationality of the country with diplomatic relationship with Japan, which includes Indonesia. Okay? I think some of you may not be an Indonesian here. So uh, there is a country that doesn't qualify. Uh, Indeed, uh, China and Korea uh, do not qualify at this moment for this mix scholarship. Age. Uh, there is an age restriction for some reason. You have to be born after April 2nd of 1987. Uh, academic background, field of study, and uh, language proficiency. Basically, if you meet the requirements our requirement for you to enter a graduate school, uh, you will meet those requirements for the scholarship. Okay, so here is the sort of the uh, a list that was uh, uh, provided by actually University of Tokyo. Uh, I highlighted the Indonesia. There are many, many countries that we do, the Japanese government has uh, those agreements, and uh, these are the uh, sort of the uh, list. Uh, that is included. So uh, how you are going to apply? We do have a web page that you can apply online. But as Thomas has mentioned in the video, we have many, many graduate programs. And it's rather confusing. It must be confusing. The One of the uh, programs that we have is for the master's programs in medical science and master's programs in public health, and the doctoral program in medical science qualifies for the university recommendation slots. So we have a number of slots that we you can apply to our program as a max scholarship applicant. Okay? That doesn't mean that the other programs do not have a scholarship. Okay? It's just one of the categories that I am introducing here today. So uh, how do we one apply for the graduate programs uh, that are involved in MEXPOS? First, you need to contact our faculty member that belongs to the one of the three programs, OK? Uh, you can email the faculty member that you're interested, but make sure 
you will you should mention that you are applying as a med scholarship university recommendation okay again there are many many categories so it is extremely complex but if you say med scholarship university recommendation and you wish to enroll in particular year you should also specify that it actually will get some attention because they do understand when is the deadline for your application. So they'll either react, yes, I'm interested, or I'm sorry, uh, we don't have slots. Uh, some faculty receives a lot of applicants, so they won't be able to reply everything. But uh, only suggestion I can give is keep trying. Okay? Uh, express your interest in their research. And if you once get a reply, uh, try to discuss what kind of potential projects that are currently available in their lab. Okay. And uh, and you should this and you can talk not only to one lab but two, three, uh, maybe four labs. You, I I don't recommend more than talking to four different more than four different labs. Yeah, I think. Uh, uh, two or three is more reasonable. Uh, one, you might not get the reply. Uh, and then construct the research plan uh, together uh, with your prospective faculty member. And this is probably the most difficult step in your applying to the, any scholarship to Japan or anywhere. So uh, in the MEC scholarship, as well as the other programs like human biology and humanics, we have a pretty much a standard form. Okay? And the question is almost the same. Okay? There could be a little more question one way or the other, but pretty much they want to know what is the present field of study that you are involved, your research topic, in Japan, that is, what you want to study or what kind of science do you want to study? So you need to describe those uh, wishes, uh, what you want to carry out overseas. And you also need to describe your specific sort of detail of your research plan in section three. So first section is rather straightforward. Okay, the present view of study. Really, focus on what you have accomplished. Okay, if you haven't worked in the research lab, just say so. Okay, but you could sort of tell what kind of things that you have studied in the coursework, and it really doesn't have to be too much in details. That's because nobody not everybody understand your field of your study. So try to be general as possible and focus on what you have accomplished uh, in the years you have been in the school. Your research topic in Japan, okay? Describe why and what you want to study in Japan. I wouldn't suggest you to say, I will study anything you want, okay? That's like, uh, you're not interested, <laughs> okay? Uh, sometimes uh, I want to say that to my wife, I say, I'll do anything <laughs> you say, but uh, uh, I probably can't do everything. <laughs> Focus on your research topic, okay? Uh, this happens sometimes. Not about your family, not about the animation culture in Japan. You can't say, oh, I like anime. That's why I want to go to Japan to do research on gene slicing. Okay. It just doesn't work. Or, you know, my, my mother was there in Japan and I heard it was a great place. No. Focus on the question. Research, research, research. If you do link your present field of study to your research topic in Japan, uh, it certainly will sound better. Maybe it's not directly related, but if you 
can sort of think about what you're doing right now is maybe studying a, a inhibitor of some kind of enzymes that are involved in cancer development. In Japan, it could be a study on cancer uh, signaling pathway. So uh, you can sort of relate your your study into your future. But that's not really, really necessary. Okay. Okay, the topic number three is quite important. Uh, this I really recommend you to discuss with your faculty member. It will be very difficult if you simply write yourself what you want to do. Because every lab has its goals and objective, and chances are it usually doesn't fit well. But nonetheless, you should study what they have accomplished, each laboratory have accomplished, and maybe write, you know, I want to study in this area and propose short uh, things to the faculty member first. Then your faculty member will probably help you. You know, we're, we're trying to do this approach, that approach. And then you sort of write up the aim of the research uh, and the significance of your research in one piece. It will take time, but this is the step that we want you to take to establish a relationship with our faculty member. Okay, So your faculty member will try to support your application. They're not going to decide whether you could come or not. Okay. So you have to take advantage of what they can offer, OK? Uh, other points uh, in the research plan, uh, usually the aim should be clearly defined. What do you, what kind of approach uh, are you going to use? Uh, and uh, those should be very clear, although it doesn't have to be in small details, OK? Describe the potential outcome of your of the research and provide an alternative or complementary approaches if you can. Okay? You're always competing with other students. So a good research plan will certainly make it better candidate than others. And have these things in mind when you develop the research plan together with the prospective faculty member. And don't forget to state your ultimate goal, what you intend to learn or accomplish during your graduate studies. Okay. So uh, these kind of points are the tips that I have when you write a research proposal. Okay. So uh, normally, uh, for the MEX scholarship for the medical science, the application period will begin sometime in July. Okay, uh, I don't have an official date, uh, but I think it's about July 15th or so. And the document has to be received by September. Okay? Again, this is a tentative date. Uh, it can become a little earlier or a little later. I'm not quite sure at this moment. Uh, then you will submit to the graduate program, and then we will review uh, whether you could have an interview or not. So interview generally takes place during the late October. Okay? You either get an email or call, and uh, you will either take uh, the uh, interview uh, in SCUBA or online, or we come here and interview you, OK? Uh, that depends on COVID situation. Uh, but it's tentatively scale sometimes in October. So uh, once you sort of qualify our university criteria, let's say you passed the written, the interview went well, all the faculties are happy, you'll be tentatively sort of selected. You're on hold, OK? So basically, you satisfy our requirements that you could be in a graduate school. That doesn't mean you got the scholarship. We have to recommend the Japanese government that you should receive our scholarship with our recommendation. 
That's called the university recommendation. Okay. So the point is, you will be accepted first, sort of in the university, and then we will recommend the scholarship. And this process simply takes time. But I would say 95% chance you will receive at that point. Okay. Sometimes we have you know, people declining uh, the scholarship or coming to Tsukuba, then the people who was on the wait list will come up. Okay. And that process could go down very, very end. Okay. We'll try to fill up the number of scholarship we have in hand. That is four for master students and four for grad, uh, doctoral program. So let me talk a little bit about the other programs. Uh, they both offer scholarship. Uh, one is human biology program. So uh, I belong to the medical science, the top one, both master's and doctoral program. But I also belong to this human biology program. So uh, many faculties are like me. Uh, they belong to multiple programs. So if you think about applying to, let's say, my lab, you can apply as either the master's student, or you can also apply as a human bio student. That it will simply increase your chance. Okay? Once you get some notification, you have to immediately decide which program you're going to go. Okay? So you need to understand a little bit of characteristic of this program. So both HBD and humanics are five-year programs. So if you graduate, the uh, undergraduate, that is your pharmacy degree or any other degrees at four-year college level, you can immediately apply uh, to the these five-year program and bypass the master's degree. So you will obtain a doctoral degree. Okay, and it's a fast track. It's same as the U.S. or the U.K. system. Okay. So uh, human biology, as Tom describes, it's the uh, interdisciplinary curriculum that covers medical, biological, computation, and other physical science. To understand scientifically how human beings can adapt, inherit, and sustain their life. Basically, one of the aim of this program is to how to solve human being problems such as global warming, food shortage, environmental problems, uh, in a way that you contribute through your research. Okay? Uh, it doesn't have to be directly involved. Let's say, for example, I study parasite. And obviously, parasite is the global health problem uh, that could cause infection. So that alone is the goal, one of the aim of the human bio program. The good thing about human biology program, that is, we've established this program about 11 years ago, and the majority of the students are from outside Japan. Okay? All, all the courses are taught in English. Okay? The humanics is also a similar program. Uh, it's a five-year program. Uh, they specifically focus on the physical science, engineering, informatics to be linked to the biomedical science. So you will have two mentors, one from the medical field or biomedical field, and another one from the physical science or engineering or informatics. As you know, they both do not get along well very much, right? because they talk different language. But here, bridging the students, we try to solve various problems uh, in medicine using the engineering approach. Uh, similarly, the using the engineering approach, we can sort of apply into the biomedical science. For example, robotics, okay? Uh, to aid uh, people in movement or, or uh, healthcare. Uh, other things are computational things like uh, gene sequencing. That we think the biologists think it's a black box. The physical scientists or the engineering try to develop those machines. Okay? So uh, this program aims 
to link the two fields and have you research uh, at the high end. The curriculum-wise, they are both five-year program and they take the similar route. Uh, in the first year, you will have uh, interdisciplinary learning through lecture, exercise, practical course. You also get the chance to do laboratory rotation. So if you decided, oh, this is not my lab, you can also change. Uh, so that you, you know, it's a four years is a long time, but your life in spending your research is much longer. So if you wanted to change, change fast. You will have a qualifying exam to defend your proposal during your second year. Okay? That's why writing the proposal is extremely important. And uh, usually third, fourth year, you focus mainly on the research, but there's also uh, various international program where you can travel internationally to do a, to work in different laboratories uh, as an intern. Uh, also, you want you could apply your research uh, into uh, uh, different technology. Uh, for example, develop a sandal that can allow people to move around the mountain so that they can sort of uh, transport the water much more efficiently. Okay? So that's called the appropriate technology course. And we expect about five years. Okay? Although most students actually graduate in six years, uh, in the human biology program, you receive a PhD. Okay? In the humanities, you could get, depending on the topic of your dissertation, in PhD in medical science, science, or engineering. So this is the most important slide I brought you today. How much can you get to study? Okay. Again, all the scholarship program we have, you don't have to pay back. Okay. If you became rich and famous, why don't you do us the same to donate the money to fund the next generation of scientists? So in the MEC scholarship, as I mentioned, you get the monthly spy stipend. I sort of calculated here, uh, postdoctoral or master's program, you get about uh, 13,000 US dollars per year. Okay, For master's is two years, doctor is four years, the tuition is exempt, and they'll even pay for your flight from your home country. The human biology program, uh, it will pay you about 7,000 US dollars per year. It looks less, but then keep in mind, this is five years. So once you get in, you are almost guaranteed that the, some form of financial assistance is available from this program. Normally, we will also provide you some teaching assistance uh, and other form of scholarships uh, that could be available through the university. So many human biology students will get an extra, uh, maybe $3,000 or more extra. Uh, we understand, you know, uh, sort of $7,000 uh, per year uh, is sort of a borderline, but nonetheless, uh, it's good to have some. Your tuition is exempt, but you do have to pay a one-time fee. Uh, they will also have a travel expense that is built into the curriculum. So you 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 can use up to two thousand U.S. dollars to travel for your conferences, for your collaborating research, uh, and the application period uh, will begin soon in July first for spring admission and December 1st for the fall admission. So they accept you either in spring, that is April in Japan, or October for the fall admission. So you get two chances per year. And pretty much the humanics is similar, uh, but they do have a little bit of a different uh, pay payment system. Uh, if you're a first-year student, you actually get little less than a, a mixed scholarship. But if you pass the qualifying exam to become a third year, your salary do go up. 
you know, it's like 15,000 US dollars until you graduate. Tuition, you have to pay half of it. Okay, so uh, in the first two years, but again, once you pass the qualifying exam, the tuition becomes exam. There are $3,000 yearly travel expense, and the time frame of application is same as human biology. Okay, so uh, we're running a little bit of time, so I'm going to wrap up a few things uh, today. I'm here primarily to advise our summer research program. I'm sure many of you here also attended last year. We had it online, but for the past 10 years, we were keep inviting students to Scuba. Uh, for the last year, we have over 400 applicants, and uh, it was a two-week program. Uh, you can uh, sort of uh, go into the on-demand video that is prepared by our faculty member, and they'll have a live discussion as well as uh, special live seminars that um, I and Mizuno Sensei have performed. So this year, we're having a summer research program 2022 in two separate ways. First, we'll have an online version that will start from July 8th to July 15th. Okay? Uh, so about one week, uh, we'll provide a video. You get the chance to talk to our faculty member. The 13 faculty members are representing this year. Uh, there's no specific requirement except for the copy of the transcript that you have. Uh, we just need to verify that you are a student. Even if you graduate, that's fine, assuming you have uh, the undergraduate transcript. Okay? And we ask you to use your university uh, email address. And if you can't, just provide us a photo ID, which you can upload it by June the 25th to participate in the online program. Unfortunately, our system can only up to 250 people, but we do uh, preferentially accept those from the partner university, like University of Pajadaran uh, and the Mohammedia, Gajabara, uh, of course. Uh, we can accept a primary, uh, the partner university part. Even if you're not the partner university, you can still apply. They will find a room to accept you if you qualify. The second part is the perhaps the most sort of uh, important part. That is, we call it an SRP plus. Once you participate in SRP online, you get the chance to meet with a faculty member. So we thought it would be a good opportunity for you to be evaluated by the faculty member, and they, they find that you are a good scientist, they can invite them uh, to the SRP Plus for three weeks in SCUBA. You can spend three weeks in SCUBA uh, in the laboratory of your choice. Okay? So uh, we intend to provide a travel support, that is the airfare, uh, as well as the accommodation in the dormitory, okay? Uh, the dates are quite sort of rigid. We are applying for the scholarship for you to uh, attend this. Uh, we'll know shortly how many people can come, uh, but we're expecting about 15 to 20 students at the most, okay? So it's not everybody. We will preferentially take those students who are actually applying for the graduate program that I described today. That is medical science, doctoral master's program, human biology program, or humanities program. If you are planning to attend, uh, apply, uh, please uh, try to apply to SRP Plus as well, because it will provide you a time for you to spend in the laboratory, and then also develop a proposal together, even if you are applying, uh, uh, even before you apply to your graduate program. It's sort of a good timing, we believe, uh, that will fit 
uh, to this schedule. So in order to apply, uh, please scan this QR code, uh, or we also distributed your flyer. Uh, log into our website, and uh, you should apply the online and the plus together. In the plus, there's additional requirements like English test score, uh, and uh, what else was there? Oh, English test score, transcript, and the uh, research statement. Yes, the one that I taught. Okay, so it's the same form as the MEC scholarship research statement. Okay, so we want you to submit that together uh, if you wish to come to Tsukuba. <coughs> So uh, we have uh, additional uh, programs uh, that allows you to come to Cuba. But first, uh, I like I need to wrap up here. Uh, so uh, we do have the homepage for each individual program in medical science, human biology, and humanities. We also made a specific website for scubamed.org. Here you find all the scholarship information and uh, general terms so that you can navigate. Uh, sometimes the information websites are very difficult, uh, especially in Japan. They have lots of information, but you don't know where you are. But you get lost. Beyond. So we revised everything and uh, we uh, we made that uh, a new page. And uh, you may have known, but we do have a Facebook page. Okay, I should mute this one. Mute, right? Oh, unmute. Okay. So uh, this is the last slide. So if you have any question, please let me know. I'm going to stop the slides. Okay, silakan. Kalau ada pertanyaan, you can either uh, ask in English or uh, in Bahasa. Jadi bebas, ya. Silakan. Okay, for the participants in uh, Zoom, you can also uh, ask question to uh, our speakers. Any question? Ya, yeah. program yang ditawarkan di unit uh, Sukuba tadi kan banyak ya, gitu banyak dan memang ada program scholarship gitu, khususnya yang Max, Max uh, scholarship itu bisa di ini boleh ditanyakan sekarang ini kesempatannya mumpung ada. Ya, yeah. tadi kan persyaratan apa gitu kalau mau ini. Oke, okay. uh, Dr. Ho, maybe uh, before uh, ya yeah, uh, a question about uh if i'm not mistaken the humanics and human biology program it contain uh five years for phd is that uh from a um, master students or uh, undergraduate students uh you can uh it's from the undergrad so uh if you are going to graduate the undergraduate within one year you can start applying or you can either you already graduated uh you certainly can apply you, but many of the uh students who, who come from asian country actually already have a math degree they still apply to our human biology and humanic programs so you do qualify even if you have masters i see okay thank you so we have a question on a chat room. Uh, okay, uh, how is the university going to assess the selected uh, participants to uh, attend okay. the SRP Plus? The SRP Plus, the university will not select. The faculty member who participate 
in the program. Okay, there are certain labs. He or she will select the students. Okay, so yes, I'm organizing the program, but ultimately you can apply and they will decide. Okay, we're taking two nomination for each lab. Okay, and uh, there is a special discussion group for those who apply as a SRP plus candidate because you have to submit your research plan. Uh, they will read it and uh, they will have a special Zoom session with, with all those applicants and they will decide who to nominate. <laughs> Eh, ya, yeah. jadi uh, admis lewat ke apa namanya ke pak fakulti membersnya ya. Jadi ke ke siap lab yang buka, ya yeah. lab yang buka itu apa? Kita uh, apply dan kita discuss atau apa namanya uh, nanti ada interview ya, interview dari uh, profesornya di lab tersebut gitu. Ya, yeah. oke. Okay. Ya, mungkin yang ini tadi ya Prof Ajeng have a question about the background uh, academic background of the applicants uh, who are eligible to uh, apply this SRP or this uh, program for the summer program as long as you belong to the education institute basically the student uh qualified but we're looking for students who's uh undergraduate who's from second to fifth year and the master students we don't think it's too good for the first year student because it's too difficult uh and uh, we don't think it's designed for the doctoral student also but nonetheless to, uh, for those who already graduate fine they can still apply too The preference is given. Preference is given to our partners. Okay. So uh, we try to fill up as many participants from our partner university. And uh, in the application, there's a website you can check whether your university belongs to the partner university, and obviously, budget alone belongs to. Uh, and uh, you have better chance. But we try to open the program as many people as possible, okay? as the system can run. Okay, thank you, Dr. Ho. Is there any other question? Yeah, maybe the chat uh, continue. Um, but I thought it's already answered. Oke, okay, any other question? Ini kesempatan ya, Tukuba University tadi Bu Kiki sudah menyampaikan juga. Jadi dia Science City ya, tadi kan 10% uh, PhD penduduknya. Kemudian apa, uh, ya ranking, jadi ada Nobel Laureate ya, 3, 3 Nobel Laureate dari Tukuba University. Dan daerahnya dekat juga ke Tokyo. Jadi ada beberapa mungkin karena saya juga dari sana ya, nah, dari dari Jepang juga itu bisa komuter gitu dari Tokyo ke Tsukuba. Oke, okay. ada pertanyaan? Saya answer. Oke, okay. uh. oke, okay, I'll try to answer the question from the online. Is it preferred for the students to have a strong research background? Or there are any possibility of those still lacking in research program to be selected as the participants in the summer? Program. It was interested in summer program. <laughs> well, uh, whether you be selected or not, if you have more or less, uh, it's a difficult choice. But I think we generally select those students who have potential in research. That doesn't mean you have acquired a lot that you will automatically go in. Okay, Potential means whether you have high capacity to become a scientist. Okay? We don't really uh, judge on uh, your background. Obviously, if you're undergraduate, 
we don't think you have a research experience. Okay? Uh, certainly, if you have master's degree and have already defended your thesis, you must have some kind of research background. Okay? So those are the points that we look at it and we what we will expect from different sort of uh, age group uh, clearly we will be different uh, from one another. Okay, is there still any question from the audience here or from online? Okay, yeah, please. Thank you, uh, Dr. Kyoho, for presentation. My name is Olivia. I would like uh, to ask about the SRP Plus program. Um, there are requirements for uh, in English slash. Uh, is it required to do IELTS or maybe TOEFL? Uh, and I also want to ask, um, can you uh, give rough estimate for the expense needed for the SRP Plus program? Yeah, thank you. So the first question, uh, I think if you are going through the application, you have a choice to pick whatever you turn. So we have listed on TOEFL, uh, IELTS, and uh, TOEIC even. And then you just you provide a score or the uh, official document, uh, a copy of the official document. Um, we think that those who are not native speaker, uh, and uh, who's planning to go overseas, uh, should take the English exam. Okay. That tells you how serious you are about going abroad. Okay. So, uh, score itself is secondary. If you have taken, it's great that we know that you are serious about it. Okay. Uh, the score requirements, we don't have it, but you kind of know what kind of score you're looking for. Right? You know, if it's TOEFL, it's about 550 or above, right? Uh, for the paper, maybe 90 or above if it's a computer. Uh, IT is about maybe six, 5.5, okay? Those are the requirements. You know, the fact that you have a higher score in English doesn't make it better. So uh, second question, how much does it cost? So in the questionnaire or the application, you'll be asked, do you need a financial assistance? And, and uh, I, I would say, would you be, still be interested even if you don't have a financial assistance? Okay? Uh, again, that's your option. Uh, we try to give everybody who qualifies uh, some travel assistance. And uh, the travel assistance is sort of set by countries a bit. Okay, so if it's Indonesia, the Japanese government or the scholarship agency sets it's only like seventy thousand yen. Okay, so we just follow that. Okay, so uh, you might have to pay about I don't know how much will it be the flight, but it was very expensive when I flew yesterday. Right? Uh, in October, we hope that it's not going to be too expensive, but nonetheless. Uh, you might have to plan to sort of bring a little bit of your cash yourself. Okay? Uh, I cannot say exactly how much it will be. If it's in the Japanese yen, I would probably bring for three weeks at least 50,000 yen. Okay? I, uh, that's about 400 US dollars at least. Right. In case you, know, you, you have to still get into the insurance, but we'll, we'll try to cover the accommodation in the dormitory, so it's going to be small, <laughs> and uh, a flight call. Okay? But some other personal expense you might have to still pay for you. Okay, okay ya, jadi beberapa di cover, beberapa untuk personal expenses tadi 50 ribu dolar, eh 50 ribu yen ya, mungkin sekitar di tiga minggu 6 jutaan gitu, 6 atau 6 juta setengah. So it's a very difficult decision in terms of money. 
Right. Uh, so we do ask, uh, we want to invite as many students as possible. So uh, again, we're, we're thinking about 10 to 20 people. Uh, if there are students who said they can come without financial assistance, uh, then we might increase the number. Okay, uh, that's all. So your answer wouldn't affect your the qualification. Okay, but nonetheless, uh, if we can't provide anybody, we might not have. Okay, so uh, that's how much we are committed in providing some form of financial assistance to come to group. Okay. Uh, um, maybe uh, this will be the last uh, question. Is the SRP based on rolling admission? Um, well, the SRP program itself has a deadline of June 25th. So, uh, since June 25th is not too far away, we might wait until June 25th and either accept you by July the 1st. So we like to finish selection uh, by July the 1st. Uh, depending on number of students who apply, uh, there will be some students who won't qualify. Uh, last year, there was 400 applicants for the online. And uh, we needed to limit to around 200 because we can't have the system going okay, if everybody just logs in uh, all at the same time. So uh, once we select the people, uh, so the deadline is up to 25th. And uh, I think many people will wait until 25th. <laughs> so uh, after that, uh, we will sort of uh, decide. So you cannot apply after June 25th to uh, SRP online. You cannot even also apply to the SRP plus. Okay? They're both deadlines are at the same time. So the answer will be no. Okay, then uh, thank you very much. Uh, Sensei and Watanabe Sensei and also Kiki San for this. Uh, such a nice sharing and uh, information about Tsukuba University. And uh, since the time time is also up, so uh, thank you very much for your session. And I uh, give back this microphone to uh, DMC. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. We had inspiring times together, and this event is about to come to the end. I hope you found the presentation at this lecture of our informative and helpful. And we would like to thank Dr. Hollis who moderated the lecture session so well. And we will also would like to give a special thanks to Dr. Ho and Dr. Watanabe who flew away from Japan to Indonesia and shared this wonderful information with, them, with us. If I Yes. Before we before we end our event today, the Faculty of Pharmacy Universitas Pajajaran would like to appreciate both of our speakers for the amazing presentation with a souvenir that will be given by Professor Ajeng Diantini as the Dean of Faculty. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Ho, Dr. Watanabe, and oh. Professor Diantini.
before we end our meeting, please uh, go into the front to take a picture with Professor with Dr. Ho and Dr. Watanabe. Ini mau Pak kalau ini ya. Oke, okay. everyone hold the pose on my count on three. One, two, three. Another one, please, operator, take a screenshot. Okay, uh, another pose. One, two, three. Okay, okay. Last, last one, last one. Okay, on my count on three, one, two, three. Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you. 